Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we are going to observe the Cyan bit extension part 1. But before diving straight into the context, today we would like to observe the roadmap which we have been following so far. Now think about it, we are in the course of COA. Now in this chapter, we have been learning about the number systems. And in our due course, we observe the number systems unary, binary, octal, decimal and hexadecimal. Now, COA basically deals with the architecture of the computer. And that is the reason why among all the number systems, we were mainly focusing on binary and hexadecimal. Now, from these, we have covered the memory portion. Now, coming to the CPU, it actually has four different segments. And among all these, the arithmetic and logic unit is the unit which helps us with all the calculations. Now, if you remember, Couple of sessions back, we talked about the 4 bit triple carry adder. And there we proposed the circuit that is adder subtractor. That is a single circuit which can perform both addition and subtraction. Now, with the ripple carry adder circuit, the addition was being taken care of. The main thing was the subtraction. Now, to implement the subtractor portion of the adder subtractor, we needed to understand the logic of subtraction. Now, before getting into the logic of subtraction, we observed the complementary number systems. And there, we observed the binary, decimal and hexadecimal ones. In binary, we had two different complementary number systems, ones and twos. For decimal, the variations were nines and tens. And finally, for hexadecimal, we observed the fifteens and sixteens. Now, once we were done with the complementary number systems, we moved on to the logic of subtraction. There we learned that there are two different logic for subtraction, that is subtraction in diminished radix complement and subtraction in radix complement. Among these two, the second one, that is the subtraction in radix complement, is the most popular one. Now, during the study of this, our main objective was to focus on the two's complement. Now, using this concept, we can finally build the adder subtractor circuit. Observe, it is similar to the ripple carry adder circuit. However, in this particular circuit, the B inputs are being fed through XOR gets. And in all of these XOR gets, the C in input is a common one. Let's now quickly observe why these XOR gets are being used and how using this particular circuit, we can also perform the subtraction using radix complement. Now, why we are using the XOR gets? Because XOR gets are also called the controlled inverters. Let's now quickly observe the truth table of XOR. For two input XOR get, when both of the inputs are same, it will give us zero. When at least one of them are different, it will produce one. Now for this particular circuit, C in is one of the input of the XOR gets, and the second inputs are coming from B3, B2, B1 and B0. So in this particular table, let's modify A as C in. Now when we feed zero through C in, observe what happens. When C in is 0, the output produces whatever is being fed through B. That means, when we are feeding 0 through C in, this particular circuit will act as an adder only. On the other hand, when we feed 1 through C in, observe what happens. When C in is 1, the output toggles the input of the B. If we send 0 through B, the output will generate 1 and if we send 1 through B, the output will toggle it to zero. So basically, when we are feeding one through C in, every input that is coming from B will be toggled due to the XOR get. Now think about it. Two's complement can be calculated if we find out the one's complement of a number and then add one to it. Now in case of binary, one's complement of any number can be obtained by toggling the bits, which is being done through the XOR get when we are feeding one through C in. Also, this C in input is being fed through this particular full adder's third input. That means, we are not only providing the one's complement through the XOR gets, we are also providing the one adding which we will obtain the two's complement. So, this is how this particular circuit can work equally as the adder and the subtractor. Now, this was all about this particular circuit. 
Now coming to the inputs, these are being fed in this particular circuit individually, but they are not kept like this. They are actually stored in different registers, like in this particular case, the A will be stored in a 4-bit register where A0 will allocate the least significant place and in the subsequent cells A1, A2 and A3 will be stored. Similarly, we will have another 4-bit register for B as well. Now our computers have registers of different size. Today we will observe how we can transfer data from a register to a register of a different size. So, coming to the outcome of today's session, today, we will first observe the extension of unsigned numbers. Thereafter, we will observe the extension of numbers in sign magnitude form. So, let's begin with the sign bit extension of unsigned numbers. Let's say we have two different registers, a 4-bit one and an 8-bit one. Now, we will be transferring data from the 4-bit one to the 8-bit one. Now, since we are dealing with unsigned numbers, therefore, in case of the 4-bit register, when we store the values, the place values would be 2 raised to the power 0, 2 raised to the power 1, 2 squared and 2 cubed. Similarly, in case of the 8-bit one, the place values would be something like this, starting from 2 raised to the power 0, 2 raised to the power 1, so on and so forth, till 2 raised to the power 7. Now, suppose in the 4-bit register, we have stored the value 0, 1, 0, 1. Now, if you observe the pattern, the 1s are placed underneath 2 squared and 2 raised to the power 0. So basically, we have stored the value 5. Now let's see how we will move this to this particular register. So what we will do, we will copy the contents at the least significant places and then clear the rest of the cells. That means, basically these all will be copied in these portions from the least significant places and the remaining cells will be cleared with zeros. So basically, whenever we want to move unsigned value from a smaller register to a larger one, we will copy the contents at the least significant places first as we did in here and then we will clear the rest of the cells like this. Let's now move on to the sign bit extension of numbers in sign magnitudes form. Now if we talk about transferring a positive value of sign magnitude form from a smaller register to a larger one, that can be done in the similar way as we did in case of the unsigned numbers. Basically, we will copy the contents at the least significant places and then we will clear the rest of the cells. But it becomes tricky if we do the same for the negative numbers in sign magnitude form. If you remember, in sign magnitude form, the most significant bit signifies the sign. Now, say in this particular 4-bit register, we have stored the number 1001. Let's observe what happens if we follow this same procedure. That is, we will basically copy the contents at the least significant places first and then we will clear the rest of the cells. Let's now observe the contents of both the registers. Observe, this is 1001. That means, 001 will specify the magnitude 1 and due to this sign bit, it is minus 1. Now coming to the content of the 8-bit register, observe the placement of the 1s. The 1s are placed in the place values 2 cubed that is 8 and 2 raised to the power 0 that is 1. So this will give us the value 9. And since we are using sign magnitude form, so this place that is the MSB's place will specify the sign and see it is 0. So this value is not only 9, this is actually positive 9. See, transferring them in the same manner as we did with the unsigned numbers, it changed the value altogether. So we won't be able to use this, correct? Instead, what we will do, we will copy the sign bit to the most significant place. That means this sign bit will first be copied to the most significant place in the larger register. And thereafter, the remaining contents at the least significant places, so these remaining contents will be copied in the least significant places. Then finally, we will clear the rest of the cells. So these remaining cells, these will be cleared. Now observe the content of both the register closely. See, here the ones are placed underneath the sign bit and underneath 2 raised to the power 0, as same as this one. So in both the cases, now we are storing minus 1. So, in case of the numbers in sign magnitude form, when they are transferred from a smaller register to a larger one, what we will do? We will copy the sign bit to the most significant place, the remaining contents at the least significant places and then finally clear the rest of the cells.
So in this session, we first saw the extension of unsigned numbers. Thereafter, we observed the extension of numbers in sign magnitude form. All right, people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will observe how sign bit extension is done in case of ones and twos complement representation. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.